Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Earls Hall Baptist Church's evening devotion or evening reflection. My name's Tom. It's great to have you join with us tonight. Thank you for tuning in either on Facebook just now or on YouTube or on our church website. As we gather together, shall we pray? Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your love, for your grace and for your mercy towards us. We thank you for the world in which you have set us. And we pray tonight as we take this time that you would draw near to us by your Holy Spirit. Bless us, equip us and encourage us tonight. We ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I want to share with you tonight a picture. Here we are. It's a picture taken by me and it's of the River Clyde, just a few miles walk from a place called New Lanark. New Lanark is a UNESCO World Heritage Site on the banks of the River Clyde near what are known as the Falls of Clyde. It's a beautiful location. It's also a lovely walk and when the weather is good as it was on the, the day we were there, it's properly stunning. This picture actually doesn't do justice to the scene, nor to the warm weather, nor to the sound of the river bouncing its cacophony up the valley walls. But here it is, the River Clyde channeling its way through a valley, sun shining through the trees and dappling the water. For me, this picture is a reminder of a good breakaway and also of the beauty of God's created world. It's a reminder of the wonder of the life that we have and of the pleasure that we have to enjoy what is around us when we stop and pay attention to the detail of all that God has given to us. That beauty and artistic impulse of God is seen in the different shapes of leaves, the different heights and forms of the trees, the strength of the stone and the power of the water. They truly sing his praises. That I believe the world to be created shouldn't be a surprise. The Bible teaches this and Jesus affirms it. That I believe we are created in the image of God should not be a surprise either. It's one of the very first things ever said about humanity found in history and recorded in the pages of the Bible. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, we hear these words. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. That's us. We are created in God's image. Jesus is described by the writer Paul in one of his letter to, letters to one of the churches as being the image of God. We are made, formed, imbued with the image of God, not perfectly because of sin, but God's image is there. When I say we... I don't just mean people who believe in God, I mean every person who's ever lived, who is alive now and who will live in the future. That means for all people there is a potential to become more like God. And we know that everybody needs new life in Jesus Christ. But even before that new life in Jesus Christ, as a humanity, we bear the image of God in some way. Broken Often, yes, absolutely, but it's there. So for all people, there is a potential to become more like God. And for me, more like Jesus. In our outlook on life, in our love for others, in our compassion, in our generosity and in our awareness of the world we live in, we can be more like Jesus and we can more bear that image of God. That's what I believe. It's one of the reasons why as a people, as a humanity, we have care and compassion and love for others and for this beautiful planet. Though I doubt that everyone on this planet would say that was the reason that they cared or had compassion. Not only that, we see in this world around us beauty designed and formed by God. And we as a people who are often creative and who express ourselves in music and in dance and in song and in poetry and writing and painting and gardening in acting and sculpture and in architecture do those things partly because that creative impulse is there 
because we bear the image of God and our God is creative. When we see things in the world around us that cause harm to people or to God's creation and we feel upset by that, Regardless of whether you believe in God or not, I believe that that feeling of anger or frustration at things that are wrong is as a result of us bearing the image of God. Of course, it's all too easy to see when people make choices that deny the beautiful creative image within them. As a church, though, all the more we see that Jesus' example was to consider the world around him and to love those he was with and live a life full of sacrifice. Jesus himself is our lived example of the perfect uh, image of God on this earth. And he was aware of the world he lived in and he invited us to pay attention to it too. As people living in this world, this is true. As people living for Jesus in this world, this is true even more so. So let's be aware of the wonder of the world that we live in and enjoy it. But let's also be aware of our role in its care and choose to realise that how we are as people is often formed more deeply in who God is within us than we can really imagine. And that is beautiful. We are made in God's image. You are made in God's image. As we close tonight, uh, let me invite you to say words that are found in uh, the second letter from Peter. He writes these words and they're a great closing benediction for us. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Amen. Thank you for joining us at, uh, on Facebook tonight. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube or on our church uh, website. It's been great to have you with us. I trust you know God's grace and peace to you this week. God bless. Good night.